like to welcome our next keynote speaker, Veena Reddy. Veena, a career member of Senior Foreign Service, is the Mission Director, Minister Council of International Development at USAID. She leads USAID's operation in India and Bhutan. The United States Agency for International Development, which is USAID, as you all know, is world's premier international development agency and a Catholic acting driving development results. A very, very, very warm welcome, Veena. Thank you, Neha, uh, for that kind introduction. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here uh, with all, all of you today on behalf of the U.S. Agency for International Development, USAID. Uh, our mission is to lift lives, build communities, and advance democracy across the world. So what does that have to do with impact investing? We, uh, as many of you know, we do fund projects, but uh, really we want to create partnerships that go beyond, progress, uh, sorry, go beyond projects and move towards progress. And we're grateful to have partnered with many of you uh, here uh, over the last seven decades in India. Together, we've alleviated uh, uh, food insecurity for many, fueled the green revolution, eradicated polio, and strengthened health systems. We've helped promote biodiversity and preserved India's food crops, developed industry and infrastructure, established leading research universities, and reduced poverty. So what have we learned over all this time? Well, we certainly didn't get uh, everything right, and we've learned a lot of things and have adjusted our approaches uh, in many ways, but I'd like to think that the most important uh, learning is that no one set of actors nor one type of intervention can effectively address any big problem. And I think yesterday's themes of partnerships and blended finance really resonate with us at USAID. The COVID-19 pandemic is a perfect illustration of the need to work uh, across uh, groups. We, uh, all of us received our long awaited, I hope, uh, long awaited vaccines. Uh, when we did that, it was only possible through government fueled research and public health systems with private sector led innovations and civil society driven messaging and advocacy that continue to try to get us to the finish line for all populations and individuals stepped up to treat the disease and administer the shots or even just model prudent practices. Everyone has a role to play. So similarly, an approach uh, that recognizes the multiple facets that must be engaged to tackle development problems is vital. One area where USAID believes we can provide some value is through finding investments that are perceived to be high risk, but the reward has potential to be substantial both in traditional profit and improving lives. We recognize that the private sector will need proof and results in order to join us. So events like this, where we can hear from all of you, will help uh, us learn how to refine our approaches and apply lessons learned. This also gives us an opportunity to think about what success looks like uh, and highlight the areas where we'd like to encourage the private sector to take a closer look. Thank you all for giving us this opportunity for and for sharing uh, your most valuable resource, your time. Today, partnership with the private sector is very much ingrained in uh, USAID's philosophy as a critical component of our work and how we do business. We continue to expand our engagement with the private sector and develop new ways to partner more strategically and more systematically in order to increase the scale and sustainability of our results. We all face common issues when investing in new untested business models and markets. These include high perceived risk, incomplete market information, limited enterprise capacity, questionable business models, and unfavorable policies and regulations. Our global experience at USAID in promoting economic growth suggests uh, three coordinated and simultaneous interventions can really transform markets. Uh, first, uh, strengthening enterprises to make them investment ready. Once you've identified uh, the constraints to business growth in your sector of interest, uh, we use uh, professional assistance uh, partnerships and grants to emerging businesses uh, to help them become more efficient and productive. Uh, we use a combination of technical and advisory services to support startups, micro, small, and medium enterprises, 
And with these interventions, potential investors often find that the enterprises improve their products and services, sales and marketing, labor relations, vendor management, financial management, administration compliance, and decision making. Uh, then we also need to use tailored financing instruments to provide the capital that businesses and entrepreneurs need. Uh, we use the entire continuum of capital from grants to commercial financing. Uh, for example, uh, grants supporting promising early stage innovations and disruptive business models. Blended and concessional financing reduces the risk for US, um, and reduces the risk for private debt and equity investors as firms test new products and business models or enter new markets. Uh, this, uh, the, these investors uh, help firms scale technologies and business models. Uh, we work with uh, the US International Development Finance Corporation to strategically uh, use all these different instruments to create sustainable development impacts and uh, measured by our own environmental, uh, social govern and social governance indicators. And uh, we also need to collaborate with governments and regulators to improve the regulations that govern investment and business operations as was uh, discussed uh, in the previous uh, uh, panel discussion. By engaging on issues important to the private enterprises and investors, uh, like regulatory reform and compliance, it becomes easier to solve commercial problems and legal conflicts when they do arise. So we, cons we uh, convene multi-stakeholder alliances, bringing together stakeholders uh, to engage on policy and advocacy. And these coordinated interventions can help mobilize uh, private capital investments in underserved sectors. Uh, I'd like to highlight uh, the renewable energy sector as an example of where we've worked uh, using these, these uh, approaches. Uh, we started uh, by identifying uh, enterprise development and private investment potential for market segments within clean energy, uh, such as utility, utility scale, renewable energy, off-grid distributed, renewable energy, and energy efficiency. Uh, so we supported uh, some uh, clean energy businesses uh, to help them become more investment ready and impactful, uh, such as providing technical and advisory services to 30 enterprises to improve their professional skills. And uh, we match them with mentors, but also introduce them to potential investors when they became investment ready. The result, uh, the companies raised over $31 million from investors and provided energy uh, to over 1.2 million people over the course of the five years of that program, uh, illustrating some of the things that were discussed in the previous uh, uh, panel about uh, measuring impact and uh, beyond the dollars, but looking also at how much energy was distributed. Energy, I'm sorry, USAID uses tailored uh, financing instruments uh, to support the needs of clean energy enterprises and investors, uh, keeping the development challenge at the center and taking uh, uh, these issues to uh, our uh, to instrument approaches. Uh, so we, for example, uh, used our development innovation ventures in Millennium Alliance to support more than 10 million US dollars in innovation grants to more than 20 Indian enterprises uh, to help test, pilot, and scale. And this is an area where we use the grant model uh, because there wasn't, uh, we didn't think there was a chance of immediate commercial return. Uh, but then we also used our partial credit guarantee to help local commercial banks and non-banking finance companies to lend to enterprises that have a profitable business model uh, in underserved but emerging segments like solar rooftop. So uh, through that, those types of programs, we were able to mobilized over $150 million in commercially viable uh, debt financing. And uh, thirdly, uh, we also collaborated with relevant government departments to improve the business and uh, investment regulations in the sector uh, to make clean energy more profitable. Uh, we uh, helped, uh, we worked with the Indian government uh, when they were introducing the National Energy Conservation Building Code that set design materials and standards across the country uh, to improve energy efficiency. Uh, one of the many factors that uh, helped grow uh, the green buildings movement in India. And uh, we supported 11 states as they reformed their own policies and regulations in light of the building codes so people could install rooftop solar systems. Um, so all of these work together where you know, we work with uh, businesses that need to get to profitability and also 
uh, the ones that are and can use uh, greater capital, and also working with the regulatory environment. Uh, and we're constantly uh, evaluating and learning uh, so that we can adapt. Uh, and conferences like this help us uh, learn more. Thank you. Uh, so, but in the energy sector, while we like to think our contributions are significant, uh, really we're a small part of this much greater, greater coordinated efforts. And uh, you know, India, the renewable energy sector has uh, attracted more than seventy billion dollars in investments. Uh, while we uh, invested tens of millions of dollars in projects to provide technical assistance to enterprises and support those regulatory reforms. Uh, and we were able to facilitate over a billion dollars in direct financing through such efforts. Uh, so although there uh, remains much more to be done to address the regulatory and business constraints in India's, en in India's energy sector, um, Private uh, renewable energy is poised for even more rapid growth. The Standard Chartered Bank estimates that the clean energy market in India alone uh, is searching for now for $700 billion in debt and equity, and many of you are considering those investments. Uh, so renewable energy is just one of the uh, many examples where India is transforming markets that provide its citizens with the goods and services that they need to live uh, secure and dignified lives. And we can and uh, want to apply this approach to other promising markets uh, that include, and we are in some ways, uh, that includes water, sanitation, and hygiene, uh, which we call WASH, uh, low cost healthcare, digital inclusion, and education, where India again is making massive investments in these markets and more coordinated investments could transform them. Uh, the Standard Chartered Bank estimated that WASH could absorb $20 billion in investments. Similarly, the investment potential to support digital access in India is estimated at $225 billion by 2030. And these are great opportunities that are waiting for your investments and focused interventions. Uh, our um, USAID's uh, supported Summit Healthcare Program estimates the potential investment opportunities uh, around $66 billion in low-cost hospital market, uh, $13 billion in rural primary care markets, and $6 billion in remote health care markets. These investments would transform how rural and urban consumers protect their families' health. And similarly, we believe there's huge potential uh, in agroforestry and education. And uh, really, we want to take a growth mindset uh, and which is why monitoring and evaluation and learning is essential for us to keep adapting uh, and also for us to be able to provide evidence uh, for commercial viability of uh, the sectors we think are important. Uh, and a great example was the returnable grants uh, that we made to informal uh, entrepreneurs and uh, sorry, inform entrepreneurs in the informal sector and women owned enterprises where there is not a legal obligation to repay the grant, a moral one. And uh, so you imagine that it's uh, an area, you know, was considered a risky investment, but actually 97% of those grants were paid, uh, repaid by these women, um, even during the most difficult uh, financial times during COVID. Uh, so those, uh, again, uh, by us able to monitor and uh, evaluate those programs, we're able to show uh, the models working. And, um, uh, so I'd like to invite all of you to join us, and uh, in, uh, but you're here to uh, invest in development using uh, the different approaches that uh, I outlined, and I hope that that will help enhance your own triple bottom line. Uh, you can meet your financial return targets while making significant social and environmental impacts. Uh, your reward for taking the risks uh, we believe are far greater than the financial returns that you're seeking. It is uh, healthier, more resilient, uh, and prosperous families and communities. Those contributions will enhance uh, the trust that you enjoy among your consumers and communities that you serve. Solving development challenges can also be good business. Uh, my colleagues and I at USAID would welcome the opportunity to partner with you to increase your engagement in these promising markets, and we look forward to supporting your own efforts uh, and share your accomplishments with the rest of the world. Thank you.